Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a nice day. So we're going to do a review on Dune today. The movie much anticipated. The progenitor of the modern day sci-fi genre. Um, everything seems to pull from Dune. Dune seems to be the, the measuring stick, right? Uh, it is the influence of most of our greatest science fiction sagas, whether it be Star Wars, uh, even Game of Thrones. A, a lot of the concepts borrowed from uh, the Dune series written by Frank Herbert, adapted to the big screen, something that many don't believe is possible or ever was. But. Is it no longer that that's the case? Did this movie, did this 2021 uh, version of Dune in this first part of what may seemingly be a trilogy or it may be a procession of many other uh, Dune films and novels based on how well the uh, this movie does, but did it live up to all of the great expectations, right? So... Ah, this, you know, this is going to be a difficult review, guys. This is going to be very hard because, and the reason I say that is because of, um, I am so conflicted with this film. You know, I want to just scream out and say, this is a great movie. But there are some things that I, I think the first thing we have to do with, with Dune is understand that I can't rate Dune like I rate any other movie, right? Dune is it, the novel Dune uh, and, and just the idea of adapting it to a film, right? It puts Dune on a level uh, unlike many other films. The legacy of Dune, right? Being the greatest work of science fiction ever. Let's just put it in context. Is the influence of George Lucas's Star Wars. Come on. Uh, you know, all the great science fiction fantasy writers pull from Dune. Their source material is rooted in Dune. And we're also going to speak uh, a little bit about um, the season, uh, give you a season update of Foundation. Foundation being um, uh, crazy enough, a, a novel by Isaac Asimov and being the influence of Dune, right? So the grandfather has a grandfather, so to speak. But anyway, without delay, let's talk about this film, right? So, uh, first, let's just focus on what is the difficult parts about bringing a uh, a novel such as Dune, a great work of great work of, of art, literary art. What is the challenge bringing it to and adapting it to film? So, what generally happens with writers is, if I'm a writer and I write a book. I write a great novel. My imagination and what goes on that paper, I'm only limited by it, right? I'm not limited by budget. I'm not limited by acting. I'm not limited by time. I'm not limited by the politics of the movie business, right? And so writing a novel, a great novel, uh, although it has its challenges, doesn't have as much challenges as creating a film that is trying to get the, put the essence of what that novel is about the film. So, a, you know, a writer, anything he can dream and imagine in five minutes, he can put the pen and paper. We know you can't do that with film. Um, so the challenge generally with something like the Dune saga, the Dune uh, novels is um, how true are you to the books? How true are you to the material? How uh, well can you capture that the film? Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult, right? A scene that takes uh, 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 setting the stage for a scene in a novel that maybe takes you five minutes to write may take you years to, to put on film, right? Anyway, I think many of us quite understand that. But how well was this in relation to that? Here's the thing. 
And here's the thing you need to understand about it. The director of this, Denis Villeneuve, right? He, and please understand what I'm saying here because there, there is a very good part to this. I think that although Denis couldn't exactly transform this novel into the into the big screen, although he couldn't completely physically do that, what he was able to do that was amazing and quite a feat was come closer than any other Dune film, any attempt. I mean, he captured so much of the, the the spirit of this novel that he came so close that you almost can't tell the difference, right? So I don't think Denis Villeneuve pulled it off, but I do feel Denis Villeneuve did such a great job, such a great job that, and, and being remaining true to the material, the novels, that, I mean, it's almost close enough, right? So this is a good film. All Dietering on great. Dietering on one of the best films of all time. Certainly one of the best sci science fiction films of all time. Great movie. One of my concerns, uh, which I understand, I have done, my, done myself a disservice in that I haven't watched this young actor, Timothy Chalamet. And many of his other films, right, that have been critically acclaimed great films. I haven't watched uh, Timothy Chalamet's acting range, right? And although I've heard so much good things, only good things about him. But I got to see for myself the maturity of this young actor. I mean, I understand what Denis Villeneuve saw in this young man, it is very strange how he does this, but he looks like a kid at one moment. I mean, he is a kid, right? He looks like a kid. He moves like a kid. And then in a nanosecond, he can inherit the spirit of a much older seasoned actor. And he can draw you and you really feel it. This kid is a great actor. Um, I am very, very pleased with his, his acting and portrayal of Paul Atreides. Although I thought at first Timothy Chalamet's uh, performance would be more so, uh, he would be, Paul would kind of be in the background and it's so much, so many big, great actors, big characters in this film that it would be this sheer carrying of this film and, and, and that is what it is however timothy shamalee in this very strange weird way you know for being his age and and, and all this and, and i'm not saying that it's not he needs to play off of the, the older more seasoned act, actors and actresses to a degree right but this young man can if, if he had to just be on film by himself you know, for, uh, you know, an hour or so, he could pull it off, right? And, and he would make you believe, and, and he could do that. And that is amazing. I see what Dina Vili knew, sees in this kid, like I said. So that's all great. But what didn't it capture? Like, what what was the negatives of this? And that Dina Vili knew did such a great job of uh, transferring this over to silver screen, right? Adapting it, uh, that it, 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 is, it was so close you couldn't almost tell the difference. Where, where was the problems in this film? And, and there's a lot of people who have mixed emotions. Most people I'm hearing good reviews about because this is a brilliant, breathtaking film. It looks fantastic. I mean, it looks so good. You're just willing to believe it's a good film, but and it is a good film. Is it a great film? And if it's not a great film, what what were the hangups? So these um these um uh, I would say uh, limitations of the film 
are all technical, right? They're all technicalities, right? Um, and that there are just some circumstantial things that I think was probably going to be impossible to overcome. And that is just the business of the movie, the movie uh, industry. And that is that you can't, you know, at this point in time, it's a lot of red tape and trying to pull in a movie that's over three hours now, right? What was the last movie I saw at the movie theater that was over three hours? I, I, I don't think they do that anymore, right? I, I can't remember the last one. So a lot of times they're going to break them into parts and, and things like that. Now, the problem with Dune, what I saw was, although they did a good job of capturing a lot of the essence of the novel, there are some things that get left out. And, and I think part of the problem was, for me, especially in this first part of the film, where I thought it should have been more about the struggles of the realization of Duke Leto's eventual demise, uh, the politics of Arrakis. In other words, it's saying Duke Leto, I think they should have spent a lot of more time with Oscar Isaac in this turmoil he had to deal with, right? Uh, you know, in this tragedy, as it were. And many of the other Dune films, even the wacky ones from 1984, but in particular, the miniseries of the 2000s, which, of course, had 10 hours to go or, or whatever, had a lot of time to, to tell the Dune story, right? In this miniseries. So they had time to, to spend time with Duke Leto and the politics of Arrakis. This, because they're cramming this into this two and a half hour movie. Maybe this should have been a three, like Dune should maybe be three parts, not two. But maybe Hollywood just can't, you know, invest that much in it, right? It should be about three parts, like, the uh, the the politics of Arrakis and the first part of the story with Duke Leto should have probably run almost the, the length of the entire film. And I say that because this would have been a great opportunity to explore Arrakis a little bit longer. Now, what we get instead is, uh, the drawback is we get this kind of rush through the politics of Arrakis. We get a lot of things kind of skipped over and we get the death of Duke Leto. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, I just saw so many missed opportunities. The, the film's just moving on. And I, I think it moves on too fast through that. And and that's a that was a that that was a problem. Now, that doesn't mean it didn't still get enough of the film adapted into this and done in a way where we could uh, understand it, or even if it was a standalone film, people would be able to get it, right? And, and still walk out and say, this is a darn pretty good film. You know, even though it's some things I didn't understand, right? And it does, uh, that's the only hang up I, I, I could have with that. As far as acting goes, all of these actors, I mean, it, I'm, I'm confident now. Anything you give these, uh, these, these actors, Rebecca Ferguson, T Timothy Shamali, and Oscar Isaacs, right? They are going to hit that, and, and, and much of the other cast, they're going to hit that with a home run, right? But especially these main actors. They're really good at their craft, and they're really good at what they do. So this isn't one of those films, like a lot of films I walk in, and a, a lot of the complaint is character development and, and the actors and, and how they're cast, right? And that's been some problems throughout the Dune attempts to adapt to film. You know, many of the, the actors and actresses, right? But these people are just, oh man, this certainly is the best Dune movie so far. And um, I think in comparison to many of the other Dune films adapted, that once he gets the hours behind it and, they, and, and it covers enough materials to catch up with them time-wise, I think most everybody's going to walk away and say, oh, these, this is just like, just such a fantastic film. And this is one of these films that I will have to keep in my library just because they're such great looking films, right? Like it's like keeping a piece of art. Uh, just well done. Now, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to spend a whole great deal of time on the story because 
uh, if you're watching this Dune review, 80% of you probably are familiar with the movies or the books. But if you're watching as a standalone, um, I'm not going to get deep into the, the plot. I'm just going to tell you about uh, what I said earlier. That's the great inspiration for Star Wars, Game of Thrones. This is um, like when it's this political entry between houses and a space fearing universe. Right. And so it's like Game of Thrones in space. Right. And it's that same level of uh, intellectual, political uh, 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 na uh, navigation, but it's also centered around this messianic figure, this, uh, the, what they call the Kwisak Shadrach, the, uh, Muad'Dib, uh, his name, uh, that we'll get to learn. Now, uh, so it's a great film, right? And it has all these elements of many of the, uh, great science fiction films we've seen so far, where it'd be like Star Wars and the Force or the Skywalker family and battling the, it is Galactic Empire, across the universe this is what dune's about right with these ruling houses but let's talk a little bit about uh you know uh my you know are we going to see uh um you know some of the, the main characters in the, in the novels and who we didn't see so so far we didn't see the emperor right who's a we always got the emperor. We got the emperor in Star Wars. We got the 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 uh, the king of the seven kingdoms in Game of Thrones, right? You you got that figure, right? That's um, controlling the, the 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 world, right? The world in the world building. We didn't see him, but his his influence it looms over the the, the empire, and he's ever present amongst uh, the characters, moving everyone like a chess piece, right? Um. But you didn't see him, and also in many of the Dune books and novels, the narration, the prologues and such, are done by Princess Irulan, which is the Emperor's daughter. And uh, um, she's a very important part of the film. So I guess this is going to be, it's not going to be spoiler territory here in the Dune. I think I'm just going to talk just about how great the film was. This time around, we might come back and do some heavy spoilers. But we didn't get to see Irulan, and we didn't get to see Faye, which is the Baron's nephew. Uh, uh, and, and that that's very important to the to the to the movie, or uh, if they're going to go with the the version of the book version, what's well, going to be very uh, important at the end of the story, uh, as Paul Atreides and Faye face off, right? Which many of us you know love that, but didn't get to see them, but. I can't imagine there being a Dune without these characters, right? And although they aren't mentioned, they're going to be the big uh, uh, figures that come in, uh, I believe, in the second part. That's also kind of a complaint about the second part, that these characters in the novel show up and many other Dune films show up by now uh, as they're connected to, to many things going on, but they don't show up here in this first part. So again, remember this movie is two hours and forty five minutes. This is a long, you know, this is something that needs to take up maybe ten hours on film, right? And so that's why a lot of people prefer that it be a, a mini series or something like HBO Max. My suggestion would be, because this is gonna be the Achilles heel or something like this Doom franchise, but my suggestion would be do like the, uh, a mini series on HBO Max, right? And uh, uh you know, something like that. But I understand they want to get bring it to the big screen, have those IMAX cameras rolling and rolling. Um, but just a good movie, a very good movie. Like I said, I'm on the line of saying great, but the technical limitations, like I said, of the movie biz, the movie industry, uh, you know, about showing movies over three hours now. Uh the um you know, and trying to cram, you know, so much of a story uh, that should be a mini series at this point. Uh, all things considered, uh, I, I guess I have to say it was great because I don't think you'll ever be able to get a novel into or most of it or half of it uh, of this scale, especially one of this magnitude, into two hours and 45 minutes. You see, so that, you know, 
and, and, and Dune's a long story. It's a long movie. It's a long novel. So it's one that needs to be told to a great degree in its entirety. Or you can kind of, if you don't end it right, and, and, and it's questionable, debatable if it was ended right, you know, uh, in Denis Villeneuve's version. I think it ended good, but not necessarily right for the novel and the books. Uh, like I said, it will be very difficult for people who aren't familiar with Dune. So Dune's probably going to be one of those movies. In fact, here's what I would suggest, right? If you can't read the books before you see the film, it might be a good idea to see the old 1984 version. And it's going to be kind of wacky. It's done in the 80s, but good. Still one of my favorite films. And you're, you're going to probably fall in love with or you're going to say it's pretty good but wacky or I don't know about it but it, I think you got to get enough from the factor enough from it to 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 like some element of it and understand a lot about what it's about and then when you watch this you're going to understand a lot of things right <laughs> that would be my suggestion right but I think that's all I want to say about Doom I'm going to say great guys I got to go with great because I believe this film goes to the limitation of what cinema can adapt into a novel. A novel this great, right? You know, it. I. You know, it's just gonna be too many limitations there. But if you get that close, that Denis Villeneuve, I don't think anybody could get closer to this. Then, and then, so this is like giving you the highest possible score that can be achievable under the circumstances if that makes any sense i want to quickly update foundation this season let's get over there and check out foundation all right so uh many of you know i've been reviewing foundation foundation is the influence behind dune isaac osimov wrote, wrote the uh uh the the book foundation these series of novels um and uh frank herber comes along after him and you can see a lot of the influence from foundation in dune right so um so far uh foundation is on a very similar wavelength as dune where it's very difficult to ad ad adapt them to film but the thing about foundation is taking the the my my earlier suggestion is make it a a, a series right uh and so it's going to be a um you know, it's basically uh, done by Apple TV. And, uh, um, uh, I, the, you know, the first few episodes, I, I like the series. Uh, and then it started to do what many issues, what can happen in a series. It starts to drag on through the season with these filler episodes, kind of take you off the main story. And as we, you know, get towards the end of the season, it's brought it back around to get into the more interesting parts, right? Um, and so that's what happened. And, you know, unfortunately when that happens, I sometimes can, uh, um, you know, I have to prior prioritize because, uh, I try to stick with great cinema, great television shows. And although this is a great science fiction show, um, the, I'm putting it on the same level as Dune. There is a much higher expectation from these great works of science fiction that I think have to be done justice. And um, it must be hard to be a television writer because this is a very common thing that happens. And uh, uh, it's where they start off so great. And, and, and then, but now foundation is starting to turn it around. Right. So where I left, where we left off in the last episode um, at this part of the season, we're now uh, dealing with uh, more so what's happening uh, with the inner workings of the Galactic Empire, right? Which is, is where I want to go. To go. And um, there's this new Cleon Emperor, um, you know, who is different from the rest, right? And so uh, he has certain abnormalities because they're all clones, as we got to learn. Uh, and this is through how they cheat death, like the Epic of Gilgamesh, right? So uh, that's where I'm at with it. It is turn around. They're going back more into Gal, Dornick's story, Raish's story. 
Um, and, uh, Rob, I, you know, I think when I'm speaking of foundation, if you're a big Dune fan, uh, if you watch Dune, you certainly want to watch this. You can look at some of my earlier reviews, right. That I've done. Um, I've only done two so far. Uh, but I will be, um, you know, wrapping it up, uh, doing a, a season, um, a full season review when it's done in its entirety. I don't think I'm going to go episode by episode, uh, simply because I think Foundation, uh, again, a good science fiction show, but with its uh, its legacy, its pedigree, I just don't think that it's there on that level. However, I do think it's going to have a really good ending, a season ending. And, and I think uh, uh, it's probably going to get a season two. And um, I think that's going to be interesting as well. So it's not a bad show by any means. And if you if you are into the Dune series uh, and Isaac Asimov, you're going to you're going to definitely to a great degree enjoy this. But just from the the position of me and the channel, especially now, with most of the channel being cryptocurrency, a lot of my time has to go to that. So I have to be very selective and uh, in the series I so I try to pick like great, really great series. And so House of the Dragon is coming up. We're certainly going to be reviewing that. See how that goes. See see where we get with that. And, and hopefully it doesn't hand, end up like another Dan and Dave situation late season or even early season where the writing gets terrible. <laughs> but uh, that's all I want to say that uh, so far foundations looking good throughout the season. Uh, as I said, probably going to just wait till the entire season ends now and do a full season recap uh, of, uh, you know, how it went, how it ended. And, uh, um, you know what I mean? Was it a great series and should we get a season two? But I can tell you now, I think it should get a season two. And uh, the last few episodes, I was greatly entertained. I did slow up in the middle. So far, doing good. So we'll get back with you on that. But that's all I want to say in this video. If you like content like this, if you like videos like this, make sure you like the videos. That gets uh, that shows us you appreciate it. Gets more people watching it. Uh, if you got any questions about it, we also like to talk about the material. Uh, I'm pretty well versed on Dune uh, Foundation. I didn't read the books, but I, I understand quite a bit about it now, and it's interesting to see it unfold. And so I'd be more happy to entertain that as well. So feel free to talk about that with me if you want. But that's all I want to say. If you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe. Till next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.